All right, welcome everyone to the first Vingtro webinar, this time powered by Microsense. And today we're going to talk about collecting multispectral imagery in the most challenging conditions. And we'll also introduce you a bundle which we believe is the best in such conditions. So it's Weedle Drone, Vingtro One, and Microsense Redditch M multispectral camera. So today in our agenda, first of all, we'll introduce you the Vigil Drone Winter one. Then we'll talk about the camera, the Redditch M from Microsense. Then we'll talk about the integration of the two. And in the end, we will, uh, we will hold a Q&A session. It's going to last around 20 minutes. And uh, you can actually start asking questions and do it throughout the old webinar. Um, you can do it in the go to webinar app panel under question section. You can just type it in and then in the end I will read out the questions and we will answer them all. Maybe not all, but as much as we can. Also, we came up with a promotion for this webinar. So everyone who is thinking of purchasing Winter One with a Redditch um, camera, please remember the promo code Winter One 500. And if you go to our website on www.winktor.com slash contact us and fill the quote on that page, please fill the promo code Winktor1500 and then you'll get a discount of $500 for the bundle. I will also remind you of that in the end of the webinar. And now let's move on to meet the speakers. So my name is Justina. I am managing marketing and communication activities at Vintra, and I will be the moderator of this webinar. Here with me, I have Ihao, who is a customer success engineer at Vintra. Hi, Ihao. Hi, everyone. Also, I have here with me Robert, who is customer support and training manager at Micasins. Hi, Robert. Hello, everybody. Great. So now, as we met you, we actually want to, as we, as you met us, we want to know who's attending this webinar as well. So I will launch the first poll question, which is what best describes your role? And I'll launch it in just a second. So here, you, now you see the question on the screen. So please, all attendees, vote. And then we can, we'll be able to see who is actually attending the webinar. I'll give you a couple of seconds to vote. I see 50% has voted already. I'll give you a couple more seconds. So you can choose between either your grover, an educator, researcher, service provider, or an integrator. A couple more questions, uh, seconds. Okay, I think most of you have voted. Some last votes are dropping in. Yeah, I'll close the poll now and share the results with you. So actually very interesting. We see that the most people that have joined our webinar are service providers and educators, researchers, and we have only four and 7% of integrators and growers. So thank you very much for voting. And I'll go back to our presentation. Where I give the word to Ihao and he's going to tell us a bit more about Vinter One drone. So welcome, Ihao. Hello, everyone. I'm Ihao. I'm happy to be part of this webinar to tell you more about Wingtrow One, the professional VTOL drone. Now let us start with what is VTOL? VTOL means vertical takeoff and landing, and it is usually used to describe aircraft 
you can see that's a mix between multi-copters and fixed wings. VTOL drones takes off and lands like a multi-copter, but it flies like a, like a fixed wing drone. And why would you choose VTOL? And why would people choose VTOL over multi-copters and fixed wing drones? The answer is, the answer is simply because you can get the best in both worlds. VTOL solves the takeoff and landing space constraint problem and flight coverage or duration requirement at the same time. This is the main motivation which pushed Wingtra to bring forth Wingtra 1, the first professional and commercial VTOL, VTOL aircraft in the world. Unlike other VTOLs, we use advanced technology which allows switching between hover and cruise flight regimen for better efficiency. After hearing about what Wingtra 1 is, let's now see how it works. Wingtra 1 is able to execute your mission in fully autonomous mode. All you have to do is just plan a mission and start the flight on a mission planning software. Wingtra 1 starts the mission by taking off like a helicopter. This makes it possible to take off almost anywhere. At the set transition altitude, the drone will change its flight regime and start flying like an airplane. It will then continue to rise to the mission altitude and then map the area of, area of interest. Finally, Wingtro 1 ends the mission by transitioning back into hover mode and lands vertically like a helicopter. So why do you need such technology? There are four reasons why Wingtra 1 is the perfect tool for mapping, especially in complicated conditions. You can find the reasons in the boxes below. I will talk about each of them in more detail in the next few slides. So first, mapping of unreachable, unreachable areas. The VTOL technology allows you to take off and land in confined areas as small as two meters per times two meters. This means you will be able to take off and land in places like boats or narrow forest lanes. Besides that, uh, Wingtro 1 can perform gentle and safe VTOL landings even on the most rocky grounds like open pit mines and on hilly terrain. This means you don't damage the sensors or the drone itself during the landing. This is an outstanding feature compared to typical fixed wing belly landings or parachutes. Moreover, you can adjust the landing spot in changing environment like a drifting boat or recently car parked cars in hover assisted mode. This gives you more flexibility and safety assurance. One of the best examples to demonstrate these features comes from a customer of ours in Australia. They are a group of researchers who are using Wingtro 1 for sea life monitoring. The fact that they have to capture images of the sea makes taking off from a boat the only effective solution for them. And the picture here best illustrates how we solve these problems for them. And second, secondly, um, Wingtro 1 is able to provide uh, the users with ex exceptional data quality and broad, broad flight coverage. Wingtro 1 is very resistant to winds and remains stable during the flight. This helps in ensuring that pictures are captured in the straight line and well oriented according to the flight paths. In the picture here, you can see that there are no zigzag patterns in the position and orientation of the captured image, images, and the area is covered consistently. High wind resistance plus the drone design also contribute to less camera motion or vibration while ca capturing images. This means you will have less blurry images. On top of that, Wingtro 1 is capable of covering a huge area in just a single flight. Under optimal conditions, it can fly for around an hour in a single flight. In terms of area, let's take Mikasense Red Edge M for example. You can easily achieve 170 hectares at 
120 meter above ground, which is 8.2 centimeters per pixel with this camera. This makes Wing 12 One missions have better data quality assurance, cover 10, cover 10 times more than multicopters, and is 80% quicker than terrestrial me measurements. And the third point is Wing 12 One is able to offer you increased safety with autonomous takeoff. The Wing 12 One works autonomously during its entire mission, including takeoff and landing. Before the mission starts, there is a pre-flight checklist which helps user in evaluating the, sy the system readiness and ensuring safety. As for the takeoff, instead of risky catapult or hand launches that can potentially cause dangerous injuries, Wing Tro One takes off vertically without any physical interaction needed. This is perfectly illustrated in the picture. The remote takeoff feature allows user to maintain a safe distance and keep hands off at all times, eliminating the risk of mishandling the drone and making flying skills unnecessary at the same time. Apart from autonomous mission, we also offer a few options for operators to interact with the drone to ensure the safety. For instance, adjusting the landing position manually and return to home function. So the last, and lastly, the modular payload design of Wing Tro One opens up endless possibilities of applications which could be done by drone photogrammetry. All of these payloads are very well integrated such that users can swap them effort, effortlessly. The lease of Winter One compatible payload is still growing, so stay tuned for your favorite cam camera. Currently, we are offering some RGB cameras and uh, multi-spectral cameras. Applications of our customer base with RGB cameras include surveying, mining, wildlife monitoring, and so on. And applications with multi-spectral camera include agriculture, forestry, plant health monitoring, and so on. The RGB cameras we offer include Sony RX1R2, Sony QX1 with 20 millimeter lens and 50 millimeter lens. Let me introduce a little bit about each of them. First, the Sony RX1R2 is currently our flagship RGB camera. It is the best quality bundle for high resolution imagery and can provide the best coverage to GSD ratio. The Sony QX1 with 20 millimeter lens is the professional entry bundle for mapping and hands-on surveyors. It provides high image quality and flexible lens options. You can simply replace the lens with a 50 millimeter lens and make it into another option we offer. The Sony QX1 with 50 millimeter lens which excels in 3D reconstruction thanks to its wide angle of view and better image quality. Finally, Wing Tro One also comes with a specialty camera, Mikasense Radish M, the high quality multi-spectral camera. This is an advanced bundle for precision farmers and plant analysis. Mikasense Radish M comes with a 5.5 millimeter lens has five individual custom sensors to capture images in five band spectra. It weighs 325 grams, and the lowest GSD Wing Tro One can achieve with it is 6.7 centimeter per pixel. It is also the main camera we will talk about today. And now I will let Robert introduce the details and applications of this camera to you in the next few slides. Thank you. Thanks, Iha. Now we have a second poll question that we would like to ask you listeners. So this time we'd like to know what is your experience level in uh, agricultural drone imaging? I'll launch the poll in just a second. Here it is. So please, um, listeners, uh, answer the question selecting one of the following. Either experience is very little and you don't have a drone yet, 
either you have some so learning you have already a drone maybe you're quite comfortable and you fly UAVs frequently if you're an expert or if you don't find any answer just mark the other so I'll give you again a couple of seconds to vote and then we will see who is actually attending a webinar so I'll see what's coming in give you 15 more seconds Okay, I see we have 80% of the people voted. So I'm going to close the poll now and let's see who we have here. So we actually see that a third of you already have a drone and you feel that you still have to learn quite a lot about it. And then about the same amount of you have either very little experience or feel quite comfortable and have 14% that are experts in the field already thanks a lot for answering the question and then let's come back to the presentation and now i give the word to robert who's going to talk about micasense red edge m welcome robert thank you very much and uh, it's good hearing about the wing tread there and wanted to talk a little bit about um, Micasense Red Edge M, which is the multispectral offering for wing tread there. Um, so the things we'll cover here today are why would you use multispectral imaging and why Red Edge M in particular. And then also we'll look at what you can do with the data. And I know a lot of you are service providers, so you're probably highly interested in what your clients can get out of this and what you can do with the data. So we'll cover all of that. So let's talk about why multispectral imaging. For a basic overview, um, we're looking at plant health. Uh, our camera is focused on agriculture. And the bands that we've chosen, the five bands that we've chosen, blue, red, green, near infrared, and a band we call red edge, give us a lot of information about plant health. If you look at that chart on the right, you can see that uh, plants reflect a lot of light. So this, this chart tells you about how much light they reflect in each band. And as you can see, there's a not so much blue, but a lot of green, a little bump in green there, um, which is why the leaves look green to us. Uh, and then less red, except for if you see that black line, a stressed plant. Uh, you know, a healthy plant has less red, whereas a stressed plant has a little bit more reds and yellows in it, which makes sense when you think about the fall, autumn, when you see the leaves changing colors and turning reds and yellows and things like that. And then if you notice, uh, when you get to the invisible light, which we call at the edge of red there, red edge and near infrared, you can see that there is an, a, a large increase in the amount of light that plants reflect, the plant reflectance. So the differences in a healthy plant versus a stress plant, uh, are more extreme in these areas um, and they help us to determine what's going on in terms of plant health and we'll get into a little bit more specifics of what you can see exactly but this is the basic idea i mean healthy plants reflect a lot light a lot less light in the blue and red uh, spectrums healthy plants reflect a lot more light in green and near infrared um, and healthy plants in red edge reflect a lot less um, red edge light so let's talk about uh, indexes and stuff like that later to talk about how we compare these differences in plant reflectance and how we can get uh, to the heart of what's going on with the crops. So if you look at side by side, a visual image, something you would get with an RGB camera, a normal camera versus a multispectral image, uh, and on the right is an index that was calculated based on the, the images received by the camera in near infrared and red light, um, you can see there's not a lot of variation in the, the visual image. You can look at that and it just looks like green plants. Uh, it's very hard to see variation in that image. Whereas when you're looking at an index, an agricultural index that's based on near infrared uh, and other, other uh, 
bands of light, you can see that you do pick up a lot of variation. Um, and that's one of the main starting points is to see variation. And then from there, you can make a lot more uh, discoveries. So I'd like to introduce you to Red Edge Gem. Uh, you've already met it a little bit uh, as an offering for the Wingtra. And uh, this is essentially a camera that has five bands um, and it's small enough and light enough, flexible enough to integrate with almost any drone. Uh, it is able to produce data that you can use to create uh, agricultural index indices and also composites, including RGB. So it also does produce a visual red, green, blue image. Um, and all of that you get just by flying once. So you fly over the field one time and you get all of these different layers that give you all of this different information about the area of interest. Um, it also gives you full access to the data that it collects. So you collect data on the camera and you are not locked down to any one particular processing platform or any one particular analytics platform. You have full access to the data. We even publish um, blogs and articles about how to access the data, how to calibrate it, how to convert it and things like that, um, that if you were so inclined, you could do that yourself or you can choose any number of processing platforms or analytics platforms to process and look at and analyze the data. Um, so another thing to note about this is that it's radiometrically calibrated and we'll go into that in depth a little bit later, but essentially that allows you to analyze and compare data over time and uh, trust and believe in its accuracy. It's also a very highly rugged and reliable camera um, and we'll go into that later as well. So let's talk about the kind of information it produces. So if you look at the, uh, this camera, which is a narrow band camera versus a broadband camera. Uh, so the broadband camera would be on the top and our narrow band sensor is on the bottom. Uh, what's happening in the broadband is that you're looking at this wide swath of reflected light and you're averaging it all together. So what you're getting there is sort of a fuzzy bit of information, whereas if you're looking at narrow slices of the spectrum, it's kind of like looking at a higher resolution. This is basically a higher spectral resolution. For one, you're getting more than just the two bands that you see there, but for another, you're looking at very specific measurements of those bands in very specific places um, that we chose specifically for plant reflectance. So you're getting a very accurate, detailed um, picture of what's going on spectrally and there's no band contamination there's no cross contamination from different bands as you see in the top part there you're getting a little bit of the the yellows and maybe even a little bit of the green um, and you're get, you're getting light that's coming from different places in the spectrum whereas if you focus narrowly that's not happening you're not getting that contamination So the kind of information that this produces for you is the kind of information that lets you generate multiple types of agricultural indices. Now, if you're a researcher in the field, you're probably familiar with a lot of these indices already, like NDVI and maybe even NDRE, but there are many, many more than that uh, in the literature. Um, and uh, many applications provide uh, a lot of different analytical layers to get at the heart of, of different things. So the, the red edge wave band in particular uh, on, our, on our sensor um, provides so many more uh, valuable indices. And it's also a way to look at stress and disease that doesn't show up in other bands and in, in other indices. Uh, it allows you to detect things earlier than you might, not even just with the visible eye, but uh, you know, even beyond just cameras that just look for NDVI. Um, having this red edge wave band and utilizing this allows you to detect things way earlier than you could before. And that gives you the ability to manage problems more effectively. It kind of gets at um, chlorophyll content even rather than just, you know, looking at the number of leaves or the health of leaves there. But you can actually kind of look at leaf yellowing early, early on um, before any symptoms are available. So as I said, there's so many different composites and indices available. Um, even just here, what we've printed here uh, are a number of indices and composites that we offer on our cloud platform. 
Um, so we have a cloud platform called Atlas that lets you analyze data um, taken from Red Edge. Um, it's not the only one out there that can do analysis. There, there are a lot of others, but this is just kind of an example. Uh, you know, you get visible RGB imagery. You get a chlorophyll map that tells you about, you know, the chlorophyll content of the leaves. Um, and you have the standard NDVI as well as an NDRE, which is just like NDR, only using the red edge band. Um, you, you can look at weeds. You can get uh, a digital surface model, which is like this three-dimensional model of what you are of your area of interest um, so there's so many different uh, layers and things that you can get at that kind of uh, tell you so much about your your crops and your area of interest and again that's all from one flight um, so you can also do this in a trusted way i mean what we offer here is something that's radiometrically calibrated we do that in two ways we have a light sensor that little red guy that you see there, he goes on top of the aircraft and collects incoming light. So you know how bright the incoming light is. So that way, when you're looking at the reflected light, you actually know the percentage of light that's being reflected back. That's a very important key element. Uh, another way we get at this is by measuring the incoming light at the ground level. So we provide with every camera, there is a free uh, calibration target, this panel here that has a known reflectance surface that you can take a picture of uh, on the day of the flight uh, at the moment of, of flight uh, and you can use that to calibrate the imagery as well. So uh, I know researchers know how important that is to have an accurate radiometrically calibrated data set and of course that's important for service providers too to give your, your clients the trusted um, data they, that they know they can trust and compare over time because ultimately that's one of the best things you can do with this is that once you have collected this data it's not a one-time use thing you can actually now that it's radiometrically calibrated you can compare it over time you can look at crops in december versus march and june and see how they've developed over time and see where problem areas are over time you can see you can get at stuff like yield and things like that so um, and this is all because it's independent of the lighting conditions of the day. It's just because, you know, it doesn't matter if the sun was brighter, or if there were clouds that day, or if there were no clouds the next time you flew. All of that is calibrated for with these light sensors and panels. So one thing that I mentioned before is that it's rugged and reliable. Well. What's happening with this camera is that it just doesn't get returned here. Uh, people are using it and they are putting it out there in tough environments and tough conditions. Um, you know, it's it's less than 3% of the cameras are sent back for hardware issues or anything like that. In fact, you know, usually it's only if it's in some severe crash. We've even heard stories of people, you know, their drones falling into a lake or something like that, recovering the camera and it's still working um, and they ha didn't have to return it. Um, so we hear a lot of stories like that. I don't recommend doing that, but <laughs> uh, but we do hear those kind of stories. It works in, in very hot temperatures, very hot climates, uh, up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Celsius. And uh, we, we are committed to supporting this camera. It has a high level of support. We make it right here in Seattle, Washington, um, and comes with a full year warranty as well as our commitment to support it and to make sure that you're getting the data that you need to. So let's take a look at one example of what you can do with Red Edge. Let's take a look at a real life example here in forestry. So in this case, this data was flown um, and captured uh, multiple layers. Right now we're looking at the RGB composite, which is just like what you would see if you just took a normal camera on a drone and flew it, or if you were kind of looking from above on the plane. You would look down and you would see this. And as before, we talked about how in visible imagery, you don't often see a lot of variation uh, in the trees. Now, everything looks pretty much identical. Um, it's really hard to tell variation. Uh, maybe if you zoomed in closely, you could probably go and look through and count different variations of trees and things like that. The goal for this project, I believe, was to kind of look and see if they could identify different variations of, of trees here. So let's take a look at what they did to 
uh, to discover that. So to do that, they, they are looking at another layer here that shows very clearly the variation in the trees. And we have different shades of orange here, which kind of get at the different species of trees that they found um, in this image. In fact, there's about four classes of orange here, or four different shades. So this makes classification way easier. I mean, just comparing it between the RGB imagery and this one, it's it's so much easier to see. And that's thanks to all of the, the different bands that we have available that reflect all the different lights. So you can kind of get these different signatures um, in one data set here. So that's just one application. There are so many others. If you want to learn more about different applications, please visit our blog at blog.micasense.com. Just visit our website at micasense.com and you can find out a lot more. All right, thank you, Robert. And now we have the last poll question for you listeners. And this time we'd like to know what problems are you most frequently using imagery for? So for those who already use the imagery and I will launch the question just in a second. So now you should be able to see the possible answer, so please vote for one of the following, whether you use the imagery for identifying crop stress or counting individual plants or trees or yield estimates or identifying and monitoring disease or some of the above. I'll give you a couple of seconds more to vote. having in mind that not every one of you are actually already using the imagery. I think it's gonna be fine when most of you have voted. Okay, I think that we can close the poll and see what results we have. So if we look at the poll, it's very interesting. Most of you actually use the imagery already and you use it for several reasons and most of you are actually using it for identifying crop stress counting individual plants or trees or identifying disease thank you for voting it was very interesting to see and now we can proceed to the last part where Iha is going to talk about integration of Vingtra One drone and Micasense Red Edge camera. Welcome, Iha, again. Thank you, Justina. So uh, I will continue here and talk about how we do the deep integration between Vingtra One and Micasense Red Edge M. While integrating the camera into the drone, it is very important to ensure the usability and robustness of both hardware and software. First, from the hardware perspective, a good integration requires a well-designed camera mount. As you can see from the picture, the camera fits in perfectly and is being held firmly. And also in the picture, you can see there's a big black button on the top left of the camera on the orange mount. That button is for users to have easy access to shutter trigger. Besides that, uh, both the light sensor, which was mentioned by Robert just now, and the GPS module are also fixed onto the mount, which makes it modular. You can put this whole camera with the mount onto any other Winter One unit you, you would like to. A special top cover is also designed to always expose the light sensor to the sunlight to make sure the data you get over time in a day can be accurately calibrated. Many customers who bought Red Edge M are also purchasing an RGB camera for other applications. The payload bay and the camera mount design 
makes it so easy for users to swap cameras whenever they want. Now let's have a look at how we make it easy for customers to use from software perspective. So I would now introduce you to the to our flight planning software, which is called Wingtrop Pilot. Wingtrop Pilot provides an intuitive uh, user interface and user-friendly flight planning solution. It is simple, but at the same time provides all necessary and time-saving functionality for our users. You can plan and execute the entire mission right on Wingtrop Pilot. We also recently introduced some nice features like KML import and terrain following, which further simplify the flight planning for our users. As for Red Edge M specific integration, the first point would be that the GSD to altitude relationship is configured auto automatically based on different payloads, including Red Edge M. Furthermore, Wingtrop Pilot also has a Red Edge M special checklist. Not only this checklist helps users to ensure the system readiness and flight safety, it also guides you through everything, including configuring the Red Edge M camera, like steps to connect to Red Edge M Wi-Fi, checking Red Edge M checklists, changing settings on Red Edge M, and it also reminds the user to take calibration picture. Um, as you can see in the picture, this can be done conveniently with the big button, the big black button on the mount. All of these details, which are specially designed for Red Edge M functionality, are aimed to provide Wingtrop One Red Edge M users with a seamless workflow. For a complete multi spectral data collection toolchain, you can use PIX40 Mapper for initial processing and images stitching after data collection is done. After that, you can port the resulting reflectance map from PIX40 into MakerSense Atlas for further data analysis. The colorful map you see in the picture is one of the sample maps which is created by Wingtrop One Red Edge M. It is showing the optimized soil adjusted vegetation index layer of a crop field. This map is done with only a single flight and you can see the map is really complete. There is no hole in the map, no need for data recollection, thanks to the flight stability of Wingtrop One. To better understand how our customers perceive this combination between Wingtrop One and Red Edge M, I'm happy to share with you a real user story. So Wingtrust customer Romain Cruze from a company called Karige just purchased a Wingtrust One Red Edge bundle for monitoring health and status of sugar canes like chlorophyll level and moisture content in sugar cane farms in Martinique. I would like to share with you some of his reasons for choosing Wingtrust One Red Edge as his tool. First, um, Romain really appreciates the ability of Winter One to take off and land accurately on small piece of land without damaging the camera. Like most of our audiences today, he's a service provider himself. Not only this feature helps him in solving space constraints, constraint problem, it also gives much better impression to his client when he's doing demo for them simply because Value landing can look scary sometimes. Besides that, the possibility to switch payload also interests him. Being a service provider, it is very important for him to have a versatile drone as he's planning to use Pingtro One for other projects with RGB cameras as well. Last but not least, the fact that Wingtro One is able to map big field in difficult terrain and windy condition is very important to him. For your information, Martinique is uh, very famous for its, for its win. All in all, through our customers, we can really see that Wingtro One's feature are really helping them in making their day-to-day -day work more efficient. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them in our Q&A sessions. Thank you very much for your attention. 
Thank you, Ihao. And we are perfect on time. So now we have actually 20 minutes to answer your questions. And actually, we got quite a lot of them. I apologize in advance. We probably won't be able to answer all of them, but we'll try. So if we cannot answer all of them, please send me an email. Everyone has an email of mine, and then we can answer them after the session. Also, I already saw that some of our listeners want to see the promo code again, so I will move to another slide. I don't want to finish the webinar yet, but then you'll be able to see the promotion code all the time. So let's start with the questions. Um, just give me a second. Yes, uh, so the first question is for Ihao. Uh, and Eric Ericsson is asking, what is the maximum wind resistance when taking off and landing with Vintra 1? So, um, Vintra 1 has, so we have um, built-in software limitations on wind, wind, wind measurement. And currently the takeoff limit, wind limit we suggest to our customer is when you measure at ground, the wind speed should not be exceeding six meter per second, and as well for landing. Okay, thanks. And the next question. Um, uh, Mario Castro is asking, are there any plans to build a solution with the LiDAR sensor? I believe that one is as well for eHow. Can you answer? So, um, LiDAR sensor is one of the possible payload uh, that will be con highly considered in our roadmap, uh, but currently it, it is still not, pos uh, not available right now, but we might be considering to integrate it in the future. Okay, one more question for Ihao. Um, can both the RGB and MicroSense cameras be fixed to the Vintra at the same time? That's a question from Sean Olvari. Um, currently, the, it, it is also not, unfortunately, this, this is also not possible yet. Um, but we are we we have received some uh, I mean a few customers who are asking about these possibilities, um, but um, there's not as we are more like demand um, directing our development. So we we currently st still do not see high demands on these. Uh, requirement so uh, it's still not in our plan yet but maybe if we see more demands in the future for like simultaneously having RGB cameras and multi-spectral cameras on the same drone together then we will consider in making it possible okay the next question is actually for Robert um, Jake Lindgren is asking, um, could you tell us how the Microsense camera compares to the Sensefly Sequoia camera? So the, the Red Edge and the, it's actually the Parrot Sequoia um, built by the Parrot Company in France. Um, and we, we sell the Sequoia as well. We offer that on our website. Uh, so the Sequoia has four multispectral bands. It has the green, red, red edge and near infrared band. It is missing the blue band. Uh, the red edge has the blue band in addition to the green, red, red edge and near infrared. So that's one difference is that you can get an actually a full color RGB image directly from the multispectral sensors uh, at the same resolution and the same time um, as that. It is a global shutter. The Sequoia has a rolling shutter on its RGB camera, so it's less easy to use in uh, drone conditions, unless you have a nice stable drone like the Wingtra, which can you know, be smooth in, in its flight. Um, but uh, so those are just some of the differences, um, but there are a lot of other differences as well. 
including its ability to perform well in very hot environments, which is not possible with the Sequoia at this time. The Red Edge can um, perform very well in temperatures up to 50 degrees Celsius. Um, and there are a lot of other differences as well. We have a comparison chart on our website. If you want to learn more about the differences, just go to micasense.com and you can compare them. Thank you. Then there's a question from Fabio Grigoli about the starting price of the drone. So I will take lead and actually answer this question myself. So basically, uh, Bingta one is priced in between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. It very much depends on the uh, build of the drone, what cameras you choose, what upgrades you choose. So I cannot say the exact price. That's why if you know what exactly you want, the best way to get to know the price would be to go on Bingtra website and fill the quote of your application, exactly what you want to have, and then we would send you an exact quote with the price. And of course, if you use a promo code from today's webinar, then you get a $500 discount. Um, then we can continue with the other questions. Um, Sorry, just a second. I see already some questions that were answered by Robert. Um, there's a question from Sean Logal as well to Robert. He's asking how many Redditch cameras are in use or have been sold already? Well, that's a big question, but we 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 sell a lot of them. Um, so I can't really give you specific numbers or anything like that. But um, yeah, they're very popular. <laughs> but people are calling it the the industry standard. We get a lot of information back from our customers that they're hearing that it's the standard in the industry. Um, researchers and service providers are, are telling us that it's the camera they hear about the most. Thank you. Then we have again uh, a question for Iha from Greg Baker. He's asking how many batteries are in the Vinter one and what is the capacity in watt hours per battery? Uh, Greg is curious for restrictions traveling with batteries on commercial airlines. Iha, can you tell a bit about experiences with traveling? Yes, definitely. So, uh, I use um, lithium-ion technology battery. It, it's a smart battery technology, and it is also UN compliant. And uh, to answer the question, we use a pair of batteries, so two batteries for two for the drone to be operate, uh, operational, and one one unit of the battery has 98 watt hours. And I think for airlines restrictions. You can carry as many batteries as you can if it's under 100 watt hours. So it should not be a problem if you are carrying it in your hand as your hand luggage. Okay, thanks. I see many more questions from Greg Baker. We will try to answer at least a few. He's asking as well. Is there a way to plan flights in the office without the controller hardware? Can you answer, Iha? Oh, I actually see um, there. He. It's a long question, so and I think it has two parts of it. Um, I will answer the first part of it of it first. So. There is a you. It is possible for users to plan flights in the office without going to the field. Uh, you can basically uh, start the software without without connecting to the hardware, and then you plan. You know where you want to do your mission, and then you just navigate your map to there, plan your mission, and then once you are done with it, save it, and then when you are on the field, just load the map. So we also 
provide the um, feature to for you to just load the previously created map uh, uh, created flight plan and you can direct directly uh, execute your flight plan by after checking the surrounding environment is okay and the second part uh, of it is uh, can Wintro pilot be installed on additional tablets for this purpose um, you so currently we only support officially we only support the tablets we sell and uh, we do not we i mean you can try to install it uh, on other any other ta tablet model mo model you can find but uh but we we don't we don't officially support that and we we can only guarantee that this software will work on the tablet we sell and we we do offer uh, customers to buy extra tablets from us. Um, thanks. Um, now, next question is from Rolando Bustillo. He's asking uh, what size of the area is it possible to cover with one single battery of Bingtra One? Ihao, could you answer this one? Yes. So as I said just now, uh, we for the drone to be operational, we need two batteries, so a pair of batteries at least. And regarding the areas which you can cover in one flight with one pair of full charge, fully charged batteries, it depends on what camera, what payload you use, and also what height and what overlaps you use. But um, let's me let me give you some information with the best uh with the assume assume configurations we have here so for let's say if you are using red, red edge um you can you can basically achieve um at achieve 170 hectares at 120 meters uh, altitude above ground so it makes like 8.2 centimeter per pixel and if you are interested in RGB camera, uh, oh, sorry, I have to, I, I want to add on to the point just now. So the oh, the side overlap we use uh, in the Red Edge case I mentioned just now is 65%. And if you are interested in uh, RGB cameras, uh, for example, the flag, our flagship camera, you can basically do um, 210 hectares at um, 120 meters height, which is like 1.5 centimeter per pixel with the RX1, R2 camera. And uh, the, the assumed side overlap here is 60%. Thank you. Now I actually have two questions for Robert. Um, first of all, there's Chris Rylands who's asking, um, is it possible? To, sorry, I'm going to read the question. Maybe it's going to be easier. The camera takes all band of light, or can you select less to save the data collection so only NDVI is available? So you can turn off individual bands. You can you can look at, in the, in the web configuration, you can configure which bands you want to capture. Uh, so you could just look at RGB if you wanted to, or near infrared or red edge. Okay. I'm not sure, you know, if you're integrating it with a drone, you can also do that programmatically, but, you know, it depends on the drone integrator to help you set that up. But you can you can definitely do it from the web configuration. Okay, there's another question from Billy Pineda. Um, he's asking whether... Mike, since Red Edge could be integrated in DJI Matrix 600 Pro drone. Yes. Uh, in fact, on our website, we sell an integration kit for that. Okay. Let's move to see what other questions we still have. Um, the same, Bibi Pineda is asking, um, can I have access to raw imagery and then process that in my own software? Um, it's a question for Robert. 
continue. I'm sorry, you cut out a little bit there and I couldn't hear the question. Oh, sorry, I can repeat. Um, so Billy asks, uh, can I have access to raw imagery and then process that in my own software? Yes. So the raw imagery is fully yours to process. The metadata is completely accessible. There are tutorials that we've published online that you can follow to integrate it into your own software. It's also widely supported in, in commercial software as well. Things like Pix4D and Agisoft and things like that and Envy. Okay, thanks. Then we have a question from Jake Lindgren, which is uh, for eHow. He's asking about RTK capability with the Red Ditch camera. Well, I will correct that immediately that we don't have RTK, we have PPK, and I think eHow can further answer whether it's now whether it's now available with Red Ditch or is it going to be available there. So. Uh, Wingtro one PPK with Red Edge options uh, is still not available available currently. Um, uh, I di di this is a, in our plan. Um, we will most likely release it maybe next year. Um, so you in the questions it's also asked. Uh, can I explain how is it possible to do that? Uh, it's a good question. Um, currently uh, we are using the self-triggering capability of uh, Red Edge itself to do the geotagging on the Red Edge images. But um, I think with PPK, this will not work because um, you simply need to get the geotag fr uh, from the PPK module. So um, in this case, we will, by that time when we are doing uh, Wintro 1 PPK Red Edge, we will probably uh, make ex external triggering. So the drone itself, Intro 1, will be responsible to trigger the camera. And then the camera will then send this trigger signal to our PPK module. And then we will be able to uh, achieve, uh, sorry, to obtain the, the accurate geotags of each triggers. Okay, one more question, or maybe two more questions for Iha. Um, what is the minimum temperature that the drone operates? So currently, um, the currently the official uh, temperature range we tell our we suggest our customer to do is between minus five degrees Celsius to forty degrees Celsius. So the minimum is minus five. But uh, actually, it is designed for uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius to 50. Um, it should work also in that range. It's just that um, we leave some margin for the sub, uh, official warranty case. OK, one more question. So that was a question for, uh, from Eliana Tsali. Now, one more question for Ihao from David Arroyo. David is asking, what is the maximum range for remote control from Vintra One? Okay, so the we have two con uh, two control links when you when operating the Vintra One. So one is the telemetry module, which is con connected to your tablet, and the other one is the uh, remote controller, which you can use to take over the drone to operate in assisted manual mode. Uh, for the, the the range that the remote control can achieve is for sure less than the telemetry module we offer. And the max distance we tested on the telemetry module is around eight kilometers. And um, the, but the, official spec sheet of the module, it says, uh, it claims 40 kilometers, but I don't think that is. So yeah, eight kilometers is the answer. Okay, thank you.
Thank you, everyone.